ElectroCast. Hold music. You want to avoid it, and so do your customers. So say goodbye to hold music and hello to faster, smarter support with Salesforce. Make service more personal and agents more productive using built-in trusted AI. Then watch costs and wait times drop and satisfaction soar. Support customers in a whole new way with Service GPT. Learn how at salesforce.com slash service GPT. Welcome to Nature Back podcast of Single Earth. In this series, we are talking with the investors about their vision of the new world, how they are investing in the green tech sector. My name is Tarmo Verki, and in this episode two, I'm speaking with Leo Caprese from Brain Forest uh, Venture Studio. The essence of uh, what is a venture studio and uh, how they are looking at, out in the investment scene in the green world. Enjoy the show. Hello, Leo. Hey, Tarma. Um, tell a few words about what is BrainForest. BrainForest is a mission-driven nonprofit venture studio for forest and climate. So we create solutions to bring more capital to forests. Nonprofit venture studio. That's the first time I hear that phrase, probably. Is that common in the world or are you unique? Yeah, it's, we are not the only ones, but it is quite a special model. And I think that's exactly what we need now to bring the different worlds together, um, the philanthropic, nonprofit world, and, and the VC world, um, and kind of take the best from both and, and bring it together in one model. Um, it, they pop up now. The, there are a few others um, that we are also uh, looking at and trying to learn from each other. Um, but it is indeed a pretty new approach. How does it work in practice? I mean, when there is a company needing help or a project needing help, or how do, how do you function? Yeah, so actually the, the interesting thing is it's not that we started as a venture studio. We kind of stumbled into that model because we really came from the problem side. So we saw that this whole market now is kind of booming. There's lots of corporates that are committing capital for reforestation and general nature-based climate solutions. Um, and this market is not really functioning. It's very intransparent, very inefficient. And we wanted first to say, okay, we, we, are, we are building some infrastructure elements so that this market works. Um, and then saw that there's so many missing pieces um, that we came to the conclusion that we need to build many of those. Um, and what, how does it concretely work? So we, we were uh, able to attract philanthropic funding to analyze what's missing and how could we build solutions. And then we are building the solutions until to a point where it's, okay, this can be a standalone business. Um, and then we spin them out and they attract their investors, their own team, et cetera. So then really it's venture, venture by itself. Um, so we come from the problem analysis, what's missing, how can we take innovation technology to create a solution that, that helps with that problem um, and then, um, yeah, bring the solution to market. Is there some typical project you could describe where you have, you have worked or, and uh, kind of reached maybe some results? Yeah, so one is building on what I said before, that there's billions now that are committed from corporate side um, for, for yeah, reforestation, um, uh, restoration of, of ecosystems. And they say, well, where are the quality projects that we need? And the quality projects on the other side, they hear about those billions and say, well, where is this money? We need it, actually. We are here on the ground, you know, doing the work. Um, and so one of the ventures that we created now, um, Silva is a global marketplace, um, a digital marketplace where um, the money finds the projects and the other way around. Um, think of you know, Airbnb, um, you know that you want something in South America. Um, so now thinking about forests, you know, you want a forest in South America, for you, carbon and water is important. So you have a filter system you uh, um, put and then you get the projects that actually are on the ground there uh, looking for um, uh, you know, capital. And then we bring, we bring the two together. Um, so that's one concrete example of, of uh, what we are building. Mm. 
Um, how would you describe the kind of today's uh, climate tech world? Uh, I think what, what I'm seeing is that there is a huge amount of uh, projects and uh, companies and the startups popping up everywhere, probably because of those billions which you mentioned. At the same time, it's probably for, a, especially for the venture firm, it's probably ra- rather difficult to, I don't know, estimate their uh, value or their potential because there is just so many of them. Yeah, it's, it's truly the, the early exciting days. And I agree on that. And I, and I would say, yes, it is obviously because there is, you know, a huge market opportunity and a lot of also very smart and driven people have woken up to the issues that we have. We are facing very, very little time to solve, you know, a massive problem. The decarbonization that obviously has to happen first is so massive that nobody knows how we, we actually can get there. So we kind of need all the innovation that, that, that we can get right now in a very short period of time. Um, uh, so yes, it's, it's a frenzy right now. And also, and there's another reason because actually lots of those technologies are available, available now that can be used in this space. You know, just think about remote sensing with, with satellites and drones and the machine learning capacities that only since a few years uh, are available and the costs get coming down that actually now it's viable economically to you know analyze vast areas of forests on on their carbon content um, it's still pretty tricky actually there are lots of startups that are you know, are, are track, t- tackling this issue right now um, so so yeah there there is a lot of things that are ripe now that can be applied to this and yes finally there is a market actually that that that, that demands for that and yeah of course for 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 any kind of VC uh, players, um, it's it's not easy to navigate this space because there's lots of shiny things also where there's you know the things are not really built behind. But that's that's this world. I mean, people are used to that. They're, um, they 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 have. You know, I mean, we also have due diligence processes. We had actually a bank, a European bank that invested in one of our ventures that we created. That was an intensive due diligence process. Um, and uh, it's interesting because it needs a mix of people. It needs you know people that understand technology. There is people that need to understand that well, technology is not a silver bullet. It doesn't solve all the issues. You have lots of you know with forests, you have lots of land ownership issues that you need to take care. Of. And it's very easy to think, yeah, okay, we create a smart contract, and uh, then it's a payout if the tree is still there. You know, the algorithm checks satellite pictures. But then if you actually look at the execution, okay, the money has to go somewhere. Where where does it go? Does it go to the right person? Um, it, it gets very, very tricky. And, and there is, you know, if you ask about the, this busy space, there's also, I think, lots of potential in bringing some of those ventures together, actually, uh, and creating solutions that, that link um, yeah, those, different, uh, those different aspects. Mm. It was interesting. You, you said that basically you guys come from the problem side, uh, in a way, to this field, that uh, solving the problem first. Um, and at the same time, we are seeing where the world is, uh, at least optimist in me is thinking the world is slightly, you know, waking up to the, having the problem. Uh, after, after over the holidays, watching the Look Up uh, film on Netflix, I somewhat, of course, started to wonder how much the world is a- able to actually wake up. But uh, to, to kind of combine this, uh, you know, solving the problem with the world waking up to the problem, is probably kind of a you know, golden moment in a way where a lot of things are happening. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree on that. Uh, and as I always also have this question, are we really waking up and is the right amount of people at the right places waking up? And, and, and you know, it, it's late, even if it's you know, not too late, hopefully it's late. But the good news really is, and I, you know, when I was at WWF, I've worked with lots of international companies and still now also we interact obviously with lots of companies. And there's lots of smart, dedicated people um, that realized in lots of positions, also very high up in international uh, organizations, uh, international companies, multinationals, um, that something really fundamental needs to, sh- needs to shift. And those super tankers, they are difficult to steer, obviously, um, and they're moving. They're really moving. I've been now 15 years in this space, uh, climate and sustainability, and um, it's a totally different conversation today. You know, you have huge sustainability teams in all major international companies that that are touched. Um, um, so there is lots of brain power 
in this space now that will that will shift things. And yes, it will take time and to, to get the critical mass also from all the thinkers within the companies will take will take a while. But I'm quite optimistic um, that lots of lots of people are aware now and, and, and people with money and people with the right positions in, in big big corporates as well as the startups obviously. Mm. That's uh, really comforting to hear your optimism. But of course, if you would be horribly pessimistic, you wouldn't be probably doing the job what you're doing, right? Yeah, I have two daughters as well. And, and I think that, you know, putting the hat into the sand, I don't know if you said it in English, we said it in German, um, is not really an option. Um, I think that we have a lots of elements that, you know, is objective, um, positive, and there's enough of the others, and especially at my time at WBF, I saw a lot of the other reports that really, you know, make you question, well, can we actually make it? And that was actually the starting point of, of Brainforce as well. I went to Singularity University in Silicon Valley on the search for exponential solutions because we have a lot of exponential problems in this space. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, the innovation technology that is there and is ready uh, that can be used. It's just amazing, and and if we get that mix right now to bring that into the space, I think there is there is reason for optimistic. It's a very uh, good point. Uh, kind of going into the new year, also now in January, that the, there is reason for optimism. Uh, if you look into the twenty twenty two, I mean, what's your kind of um, how would I say that the northern stars or what whatever what what are you looking for from, uh, this new year? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I think now for, for us at Brainforest is about a lot about scaling because we have this proof of concept now that we were able to um, you know, to incorporate ventures to to get them uh, funded. I mean, to get investors uh, that we didn't know before is also an important part of the proof of concept. So we had you know this bank that I mentioned with a few family offices. Um, so, and now it's really, uh, for us to, to 2022 will be how to scale this model, um, how to actually, um, uh, make, make, a, you know, uh, a contribution really to, to stabilize the climate. Um, and that means that we need to scale fast, uh, and not for just scaling fast, but because actually the problem is so huge and we have very little time. Um, and, and for me personally, I, I can maybe share also that for me, uh, 2022 is about. Also, it's about execution and it's about disciplined and creative ex- execution. And I think this really, again, also reflects what's important to bring together. We need, you know, we need the business, the business drive. Um, we need the, dis- the business discipline. And also we need the creativity and, and the, the new thinking uh, in this space. And we need the philanthropic NGO thinking as well. And this all combined together is, is tricky. But yeah, this is what I want to continue uh, in 2022. And and um a really scale scale is small. Mm. What's the biggest challenge? Lack of time. Well, I mean, for for us right now, to be very honest, um, unfortunately, funding also is is an issue. Uh, so during COVID, it was quite tricky to you know meet people and and kind of get get new backers. And um, so for us, philanthropic capital is something that is is uh, of utmost importance now to really build our model solidly um, for the next few years. Um, and yes, of course, time, time, lack of time, you know, is, is a crucial one. And we are trying, I mean, on a personal level, but also uh, on, on the problem side, and we are trying to actually identify where, where are the leverages, the leverage points, kind of the acupuncture points, mm-hmm. where we can do an intervention and then it has a ripple effect and really moves the market. And one of, one of those that we identified is the whole, you know, carbon standard um, area where there is um, yeah, a lot of innovation needed because it's very expensive and complex and we can use technology there. And that's the other venture that we created um, that rolls it out now in Germany as a first geography, a new fully digital, digital standard from the outset designed to have you know, as little cost as possible while having the, the necessary quality, obviously, social and environmental, um, to do the projects right, but also to enable small areas to actually, you know, join this market. Because globally, eventually, it will be all about bringing lots of small areas together. Um, and today, under the current standards, it's not, not, not really possible to do this um, economically viable. Mm, exactly. It's not really viable. 
the, the basically the new standard, it's like the alternative to gold and Vera standards or yeah, I mean, you know, eventually it, it has to, uh, you know, happen in, in, in collaboration. Um, so in Germany, there is no other standard active right now because of exactly of that problem. There's lots of small uh, land ownership. So, so the current standards, actually, it's, it's simply not possible really to apply them. Um, and that's one of, one of the reasons why we went to Germany first. And now we will, you know, try to build those innovations and ideally then some of the other standards take, take up some of the innovations that we are able to, to prove there. Um, eventually, you know, it will be a combination of different standards that, that, that are out there like it is today. Um, and I think that's, you know, it, it, it's healthy to have a few different approaches and some of them um, might be perfect in one geographic location for a certain type of projects. Um, we'll have to see how that, that, whole, that whole space evolves. Good. I mean, it's a it's a really really interesting industry in this year and probably for a few years to go or you know until the end, right? Until the uh, the uh, whatever the uh, how, how is this beautiful English saying that uh, in the end it will be all beautiful. If it's not beautiful, it's not the end. So, um, thank you for your time, Leo. Uh, we'll yeah, the- be talking in the future, surely again. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening. Uh, we will be back next week. Turn on to Nature Back podcast. Welcome to the Reverie Channel, where entertainment knows no bounds. Live concerts, on demand music documentaries, and short films, all in stunning HD. Now on Roku TV, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire, immerse yourself from home. And on Android and iOS for those on the move. Support creators with crowdfunding donations. Fuel their creativity. Join us in shaping entertainment's future. The Reverie Channel, where every view, every donation matters. Tired of all the commercials on FM radio? It's 0% financing on all. So you get the taste you love at a price you'll love even more. Get yours today. Call now. <laughs> Enjoy free premium FM sounding radio with less commercials with Autolus. Download the Autolus app from your Apple or Google Play Store and take us with you wherever you go. Listen on your phone, in your car, Bluetooth smart speaker, tablet, and other devices. Autolus. Your music, your way. Electric acid.